Happy New Year and welcome back to another weekly GMBN Tech Show. Coming up on this week's show, we check out that rad looking new RC295 from Paste, the British brand. There's a really, really wild looking single pivot carbon fiber kind of a prototype bike all the way from Bend, uh, designed by a truck suspension fabricator. And of course, there's all the wicked stuff from you guys. Okay, so straight into news. And first up, let's look at some of the new bikes that some of the new World Cup racers are on this year. Now, the obvious one that everyone has been talking about, of course, is Josh Bryceland. is off Santa Cruz and he's on to Cannondale. And there's already some really cool riding clips emerging of him testing out his habit, which is a 29 inch wheel bike, of course. And he's absolutely thrashing the pants off this thing already. So expect some really, really cool things to come from Cannondale and of course, from Josh Bryceland and whoever else ends up being his teammate. We've already seen that Jasper Penton, the uh, British rider that absolutely shreds in bike parks. He's also riding one of those bikes. And of course, Freedom from last year. We also know that Max has been riding one of those bikes as well. So it could be a whole little crew coming together there. But I'm also really excited, not just about the habit, of course, but what else is coming from Cannondale? Surely they're going to be looking at the Jekyll next, which is the next up in the range in terms of wheel travel and what the bike does. And then I suspect they might be bringing back a downhill bike. Of course, that's what I would love to see them do because Cannondale back in the day had one of the biggest downhill and World Cup teams in general ever. So I would love to see a return of some of those glory days, but we'll have to wait and see on that one. Oh, and one last thing on Cannondale. Well, now that Ratboy's got access to an e-bike, do we think we're going to see him doing some rad stuff on an e-mountain bike? Potentially so. That's obviously something for our friends over at EMBN, but uh, if we find out anything, we'll let you know. And of course, the breaking news over the weekend is, of course, the fact that Kate Courtney is off Specialized. And more importantly, she's going to be teaming up with Nino Scherter over on Team Scott. This is fantastic news. She's already a world champion in basically her first year moving up to elite. She had a hell of a year on those beautiful specialized bikes and she's a really, really solid rider as well. So what's she gonna be like on potentially an even lighter and more advanced mountain bike? The bike was basically developed around Nino Scherta and his desire to win. Is she gonna keep winning on a bike like this? I certainly hope so. And there's gonna be some really cool content coming with her over the years. So keep an eye out for that. Now, Annie Last, of course, is one of our friends here at GMBN and GMBN Tech. Last year, we checked her bike out over at Stellenbosch at the first round of the World Cup. Of course, she's on that KMC team, but they're running the BH bikes back then. So she remains on the KMC team, but they've changed bike sponsor, and they're now on Orbea bikes. That means we can expect to see her riding the Alma Hata, which is absolutely stunning, but more so on the Ois, which is their four-inch travel basically their four inch travel World Cup cross country bike. One of the most beautiful cross country bikes on that scene. I've got to say, there's a few out there that are especially nice and that is one of them. So can't wait to meet up with Annie soon actually and get another bike check with her and see what the new bike is all about. Now Team Atherton Racing, there could be some interesting bike developments happening here. Now Neil went riding with them over the festive period. He went up to the bike park up at Duffy and he did notice, although nothing was said about it, the Rachel was riding on a 29 inch wheel bike. Of course, it was one of her old race bikes that she obviously chose to ride at 27 and a half over the season, but she also had a 29. You notice she was riding that bike and of course G was riding 29 inch wheels. So a bit of speculation here because nothing was said and they would not say anything about it. But I reckon they're all gonna be on 29s next year, which suggests it's gonna be a brand currently that we're not quite aware of on the downhill scene. I reckon it could be a brand that we did hear spoken about on the Christmas Dirt Shed special. Um, we threw around the name Merida, which of course is one of the biggest bike manufacturers in the world. They make bikes for many companies, like some amazing bikes. Um, I'm not gonna spell it out for you, but they make some pretty flipping amazing bikes and I reckon they could well be one of those. We did hear some other brands like Cube mentioned in there, but they already make bikes in that sort of realm. So I reckon you might see Rachel Atherton on a 29er, but could it be 29 inch front and back or could it be 29 on the front and 27 and a half on back? Because those new UCI rules will allow that. That'll be interesting to see. Crank Brothers have got a new budget pedal out. It's called the Stamp One. 
So it's a composite pedal body. They're available in two sizes, just as before, the large body and a smaller body. And the best thing of all, unlike the top model of stamps, which are well over 100 quid or 100 euros, these are about 40. So they're a bargain price and you get all the extra traction pins and stuff in there. It's just nice to see a company that generally pushes out really high-end stuff to put some stuff at their great price points as well. I know that Blake's already got a set of these on his dirt jump bike. In fact, have a look at this shot here. You can see them on screen. Now next up is news of a new mudguard coming from the maker of the crud catcher. Now some of you might not be familiar with the original crud catcher and the purpose of this was to catch that mud coming off the front wheel that comes up in your face. Of course these days it's a bit different because we have tall suspension forks like those ones over there. Uh, in fact let's use this as an example. These days when you're riding the spray comes back through this hole here and then you basically ride back into it. So the job of the fenders is to stop that spray and direct it back down at the wheel. Back in the day when you used to run really short forks, like this ancient pace fork I've got here, there was no room for anything to go through there, so the mud would just bunch up here. But as a result, you would just get the mud coming up at you from underneath. So the crud catcher used to sit on the down tube and catch all of that. And back in the day before the crud catcher even existed, the thing people used to do was cut up water bottles and just cable tie them onto your down tube. Of course, Pete Tompkins realized it wasn't very nice and you didn't want to have just like a, a 50p water bottle hanging off your thousand pound bike. So he developed the crud catcher and it was the best mudguard around for many years and there were other options out there, but crud catcher was the one you had. Anyway, they're back and they've got a brand new mudguard and it's called the XL Fender. Now this is a shot of it on screen right here. Now, just like all the other fenders you see now, it covers the front wheel from both sides. So it catches the spray coming up from the back of the wheel and also the spray that goes through round to the front there, it deflects it back down onto the wheel so it's taken back down to the ground. But the thing that's really cool about this one, if you look at this picture here of Danny Hart's bike, you can see it side on, you can actually adjust the height of this mudguard. So in thin spray mud, you can run it really close to the wheel so it catches all that spray that would otherwise come back in your face. And in really thick, cloggy mud, like on the shot of this Santa Cruz bike here, you can see the mudguard's been raised quite high, much more like a motocross mudguard. So that's a really cool concept. And we know that Danny Hart has signed up to ride for them, so and we all know how well Danny likes riding in the mud, so I think they're saying something about that mudguard. Quite cool, that. Now, this is a really, really cool new bike from a guy called Don Thuren. Now, I came across this via Instagram, someone sent me this. Now, check out some of these shots on screen. So Don is actually from Bend in the US, and he works in fabrication for truck suspension, so he's obviously no stranger to developing stuff anyway. And so he's gone out and designed his own bike. So it's a single pivot. The pivot is it's fairly high, but it's quite far forwards, which is quite unique. And it's designed around a coil shock. Now look at this thing, it looks quite wild. Kind of reminds me, reminiscent of those, uh, the Marin bikes out there in the polygons with that big, wild looking swing arm. I think it looks quite cool. But something that's particularly crazy about this is it sounds like it's got quite a long front end. In fact, if you look at these shots on the screen here, you can see some of the geometry stuff and, uh, on his website. Very cool information. Of course, this is prototype stage. But the back end in it, 413 millimeters long. That's insane, that is so short. I've ridden a cross-country bike before with 418 mil, but that was a hardtail. Generally, you're looking at 430 um, for a back end on a bike that's got 29 inch wheels, and my new proof has got 450. So this has got 413. That is so short, you're pretty much going to lean back and you're going to be in a manual on this thing. It's going to pop around all over the place. Uh, personally, I like a long chainsaw. I don't have an issue with that, but it certainly does spell out a fun ride, that's for sure. Um, I want to learn a little bit more about this. I'm going to get in touch with Dom because I think this is a really cool looking project. How cool is this? And finally in the news this week, in fact my favourite bit of news this week, is from Pace Cycles. So Pace are a company based in North Yorkshire in the UK, they used to be known as Pace Research. They've made some of the finest looking bikes in the world, in fact those suspension forks right there are made by Pace. They're called the RC35, they made those way back in the early 90s. Now they've got a full suspension bike out, the RC295. Look at this. So when I say they've got it out, this is their prototype. It will be available later this year. Now here's some of the specs on this bike. So it's a full carbon fiber bike, which as far as I know, is the first for these guys. Uh, 29 inch wheels. It's designed around a 130 to a 150 millimeter travel fork. Out back it's 135 millimeters. It's a twin short, short length design. And as you can see on the bottom linkage, it looks like there's dual positions there for the shock, which suggests you can adjust the geometry on it and possibly either travel or how the back end feels on there too. 
So it's got through axle boost on the rear, internal cable routing, internal headset, fully sealed bearings as you would expect from a company based in a, well, a county of mud really up in North Yorkshire, isn't it? Um, effective top tube on a size large is 642 millimeters and head angle, oh, 64 and a half degrees. This thing looks like it is gonna rail and it's the right amount of travel as well, not too much. 130 29er, yes please. Cannot wait to see this bike in the flesh. Um, I might have to come and see you guys because it looks really good. All right, now it's time for Bike Cave, which you know it, it's the place where you send in pictures of where you keep your bikes, where you lock them up at night, where you work on them, where you do all that sort of stuff. I would love to see some more video entries this year. We started to get some really good ones at the end of 2018. I'd love it if people could do some video entries. Send them into the usual place to upload a link is at the bottom of the screen right there. And of course now it's a new year, so we've got a whole new batch to filter through. And here are some of the best ones we've had in the last few days of 2019. So first up is from Adam in Minnesota, US. Right, so recently completed my bike cave using the spare space in our utility room. Thanks GMBN, you really helped me get back into biking and do my own maintenance. Yes, wicked. Uh, couldn't have done it without you. Oh dude, you could have, I completely believe in it, especially having seen what you've got in here. You definitely know something about bikes. They have like a couple of Husky tool cabs there. You've got one of those uh, uh, Feedback Sports Innovation stands in the back. Really nice work stands they are. Man, you've already got it kitted out, some park tools. You've even got like a, we've got a spoke tension meter tucked away. And it looks like a dishing tool as well. So you're into building wheels. So you definitely know stuff about bikes. This is awesome. Um, so let's have a look through the rest of your pictures. Oh man, looking good. So you've got a really nice workbench area too. Nice strip light above there. You've got a wheel jig there. That's one of the newer park tool ones. I believe that's the one that can take big wheels as well as a smaller size, as in fat wheels. Um, looks like you've got a park baseball cap up there as well. Might not be, but might just be my eyes. But certainly looking good. Trusty GMBN sticker on the work stand there. I love the fact you've got a little bit of a caddy set up on your work stand to keep all your popular tools. And in fact, it looks like you've got a Torx T25 and a bit of a socket driver there. Looking good. Plenty of nice stuff in here. Oh, here's a Canyon Spectral. I used to have that model. I actually really miss it in that weird sort of acid green or sauerkraut green or whatever they called it. It's like really nice looking bike. Quite. Quite alternative actually, because not many people had them in that colour. But uh, yeah, I really liked it. I'm currently waiting for a new bike to pop out of uh, that company. You'll find out more about that on GMBN in the next few weeks. Um, yeah, but loads of cool looking stuff. I'm disappointed to see the Vice away in the corner there. All on its own, looking quite sad, I've got to say. Although, Vice is just in the corner of work stands to get the best use out of them, but it does feel like it's a bit lonely over there. But uh, I'm loving your setup. You've got nice rubber flooring in there. Looks like you're in the middle of doing some other work in there. You could probably uh, panel that out and make a bit more use of the sides. It looks like you've got insulation on the walls or something. Um, slightly different construction to what I'm familiar with, but looking good, I tell you. Nice place, mate. Really good. Awesome. Next up, oh yes, I've been waiting for one of these. It's from Morgan, um, and his bike in here is a YT Jeff C. He's from Petersfield in Hampshire, the UK. My converted VW Crafter makes a perfect bike cave used for storage, maintenance from a bike, but also for family holidays, sleeping two adults and two kids and all the bikes. Best part is my bike cave comes with me wherever I'm shredding. Yeah, 100% dude, I think it looks awesome. I know a few people have converted vans recently and it does, it makes such a, it's such a good idea, like nice tool. Oh, I love all the wood in there as well. In fact, I have to show this to Blake, he'd love this too. Let me show you, you've got bedding up on the wall there, ready to go. Uh, I guess the bed frame comes down at the back there. Oh, it's good. It's really good. Always good to sort of have a bit of a nomad life on the road, I think, you know. Do the uh, the Alps in the summer, take the bike and the kids down there. What a way to live. That's awesome. Thank you, Morgan, for sending that in. And more vans, please. Anyone that's converted a van, uh, takes their bikes away, send them in. And anything else that's alternative. And if you've got any videos, let's have them. All right, now it's time for Rewind, which is, of course, the retro section of the weekly GMBN Tech Show. If you've got anything retro, could be old photos of you in races, could be an old bike component, could be, even better, an old bike. Anything you've got, or maybe your friend has, or your local bike shop has, take some photos, send them in. There's our uploaded link right there by my finger on the screen. Please send this stuff in, we love to see it. So let's see what some of you guys have been sending in to us this week. 
So first up is from Jane. Uh, giant XTC Harto with bombers and hope discs and a custom steel frame. This is my office having stripped the bike. Um, I've got an old custom steel frame made in the 90s which is hung on my office wall as a picture frame for art that was drawn for me by the family. Nice. Okay, the XT Mech is still mounted, mounted on that frame. Let's have a look. Oh, there it is there. Yeah, nice. And my thumb shifters on it until recently. Love a pair of thumbies. Um, had the thumb shifter since the mid-90s and I bought the Hopes in 97 or 98. I finally retired the thumb shifters and the Hopes as my riding has changed due to illness. Uh, sadly, the Hopes had to be retired because I can't get the spares to repair the master cylinder, which has developed an annoying leak. Have you? Um, I guess you probably have spoken to Hope. They must be able to help you out, surely, because I, I used to have the closed versions of those. They're the, uh, sorry, they're the closed. I used to have the open version of those without the dial on the top. Um, I don't feel like they're that old. I mean, maybe I'm just showing my age here, but I do remember riding those fairly recently, but maybe not. But um, it's definitely worth asking them because they're beautiful old brakes still and you could definitely bleed those up, get some fresh pads in and use them again. Really nice to see those. Um, oh, look at that. Pace RC7S grease as well in a grease gun. That stuff was immense. That was ridiculously good grease. And that one, I think, hey, that's a suspension formula. So that's the stuff you'd purge in through the grease port on the side of those Pace forks. Um, I'd get them down again, but I'll probably pull off the set down if I do that. Um, and also some Pedro's milk levers. That was the best tire lever of that generation. Those things were incredible. And I think, in fact, MBUK gave some away on the front cover years and years ago. And I think um, mine sort of got lost somewhere along the way or borrowed by someone. But they were amazing. They do make another tire lever, which is good, but that was the one. And I think they were called milk levers because they were made from recycled milk bottles, uh, as far as I know, which was uh, showing their earth-friendly status way back then. Um, so really cool to see that. Okay, cool. Thank you for that anyway, Jane. That was really good to see that. Next one. Oh, look at this. Oh, and this has just given me a great idea. So this is from Michael. He says, the bike shop I work at in Denver, Colorado. So basically, Ned Overend comes into my work a couple of times. Um, sadly, I've not got a photo with him, but he did give us this signed jersey. I know it's not a bike, but I think it's so cool. Dude, I'm completely with you. Ned Overend. What a man, like what a legend of mountain biking. You know, racing back in the day with all the great Susan Dimite, uh, John Tomac, of course, Tinker Juarez. That's just so many big names of riders in that era. And of course, Ned Overend, super famous, great rider. Um, really cool to see. And you've just reminded me that I've got a carry bag full of random old jerseys. And I've got Brian Lopes jersey in there. I've got Rob Warner's 1998 National Championships jersey, still with mud on it, and it still smells of Rob, unfortunately. But I've got that in a carry bag, snatched away. And I've also got a Steve Peake jersey from... I'm going to say 1998 as well. I think it was 98. He had a crash at Mont St. Anne, I think it was. Or was it? No, it's a Grouse Mountain. He had a crash and he broke his shoulder. And currently he was number one in the World Cup. And I've got that jersey that was cut off him. It's still got the number one plate on it. And he wrote on it, this one hurt a lot, <laughs> was number one. Um, I'm going to dig all that stuff out actually to show you because I'd completely forgotten about all that stuff. Um, but yeah, so cool. I think maybe I should get some of that stuff framed, eh? Hey? It looked pretty cool on the wall in here, just like this Ned Overend jersey. But super cool. Um, I don't think the stuff I've got is quite as cool as that Ned Overend jersey. So really cool to see that. Oh, we've got some more signed stuff now. So this is from Adam in Suffolk. Hi, Doddy. Loving the show. Mum was clearing out the loft the other day and came across some old pictures. Oh, man, look at this. I was quite a fanboy back then. Dude, I think we both were. Uh, I still am, to be honest. I had a signed picture of me and Martin Ashton but couldn't find it. But I found... Found these for giggles. So that's Martin Hawes. So back in the day, they used to know them as the Martin brothers. Of course, they weren't brothers, but they may as well have been because they were like Tweedledum and Tweedledummer. We used to hang around together. But uh, <laughs> so cool. Yeah, so that's a signed picture. And there, there you are with uh, Martin Ash in the background. Man, he didn't look much older. Like he's got five o'clock shadow. It's probably taken at eight o'clock in the morning, isn't it? Typical Martin. He's like, <laughs> sprouts out beards like, like nobody's business. Super cool to see. There's his old Volvo Cannondale jersey. Oh man, really cool. Yeah, I used to go to all the shows and see see Martin and Martin back in the day as well. Um, I love the fact that I get to work with him now. Like absolute legend in the sport. And, and really, especially in the UK, those two riders were responsible for everyone riding trials. Now, something happened in the UK that a lot of people uh, outside of the UK might not know. Around 2000, it might be a little bit earlier, 99, uh, a, a countryside disease called foot and mouth struck basically and a lot of cattle had to be killed off and there's a lot of parts of the countryside you couldn't go to and mountain biking really dramatically suffered in that time and all the magazines at the time 
didn't know what to do because they couldn't go and take pictures of people riding mountain bikes in the, the natural environment. And basically at that time, Martin and Martin were doing their trial sort of urban demos everywhere. And they basically took mountain bike into urban locations, proving the fact that you could ride a mountain bike absolutely anywhere. And to a degree, they largely saved mountain biking for uh, certainly for a lot of retailers. There was a shop called Super Cycles in Nottingham. They used to sell DDG trials bikes and Onza and all sorts of other brands. And man, it's such a like important era. And I don't think anyone realizes just how much they did for mountain biking. And it's just like hats off to them both because they really, really inspired a new generation of riders. You know, you've got Dan McCaskill doing that stuff now. Chris Ackrig, of course, was one of those riders that's still doing it completely on his own in a different level, of course. Ackrig's incredible. But uh, really, it was Ashton and Hawes that really, really pushed it and promoted it. Well, that's all the old retro stuff we've got enough time for this week, unfortunately. Um, I could talk all, all day about this old stuff, so uh, I won't bore you with it anymore. We're gonna go to the top mods next. All right, and here we go. So this, of course, is Top Mods. Uh, top Mods is a section where you send in any little modifications or customizations you've done to your own bikes to make them a little bit different from your mate's bike or maybe the brand new bike that you got in the shop. Anything counts, anything goes. Could be a sticker, could be some new grips, could be a complete new respray. Whatever it is, send your top mods in to us. Uh, video entries are encouraged. We want to start getting and seeing more of you guys on our show. So if you've got a video clip, introduce yourself. Tell us what you've done to your bike. Show us a bit about your bike and send it in. Upload your link is on the screen right there. So first up is actually a custom paint job. So this is from Serge in Belgium. It's, uh, the bike is a no-brand 29er that he converted into his rocket ship. I love that. Like, so he's tried to make this thing as fast as possible. Uh, rebuilt my 29er. I went from a RockShox Reba to a rigid carbon fork from XT 2x10 to absolute black. Uh, so an overlies ring 1x10. A new paint job done by myself. New Ergon grips. I'm having some bling decals made up, but I don't have them ready yet. All right, well, it looks pretty cool to start with. So 2.4 bike. Yeah, and then you're masking it down. Oh, look at this. I did doubt it when you said you went from a RockShox fork to a rigid fork, but that blends in perfectly. Hey, you've done a sterling job on that, and it does look like a rocket ship. Awesome, thanks for sending that one in. Uh, next up, oh, this is a familiar name. This is from uh, Greg Chapaniak. So I met Greg at the Mulvins last year. He's a regular contributor and a viewer on GMBN Tech. Hi, Greg, uh, happy new year. Nice to hear from you again. So you've got 2016 Kona Process 134 Deluxe, uh, the DL model. Just upgraded it and I thought I'd share. I've replaced my stock wheel set with Hope Enduro rims on Pro 4 hubs. The decals are custom from Slick Graphics. Yes, I love those guys. It's Owen at Slick, isn't it? If you're watching this, Owen, I uh, hope you're still going all right. Like, uh, always done some wicked graphics for me. Uh, to match the lettering on the bike frame, love the Hope hub sound. I've set up a tube with PT's valves. Yeah, the trick, nice. Uh, and sealant as well with some Stan's rim tape. Um, and use an air shot to do it. Yeah, air shots are brilliant. Really great sort of uh, tubeless inflation device. Uh, I've also replaced my worn out grips with a set of DMR death grips. I hope you like it. I certainly do. I noticed that you've gone for the uh, the death grips without the flange on them. Um, interested to know why. Uh, why. Why didn't you like the ones with the flanges? Uh, personally, I really like a flange grip if I can get one. Um, but I'd just like to know, like, because you get the options or with or without. Um, ping us an email or comment in the description below and let us know what you think of them as well. Something I found strange with the death grip is the fact they're bigger on the inside and smaller on the outside. Of course, there's less to hold on on the outside of your bar. I get that, and there's more on the inside, so you've got the nice softness, but I found my hands felt like they just weren't in the right position. Uh, the Ergon grips are like the opposite way around, so they taper the other way, which doesn't make sense, but it feels really good at the same time. Uh, personal preference, of course, but. And that nice little shot there, your bike just uh, poking out the darkness in the woods there, looking good. Nice bike, Greg, yeah. Appreciate that, definitely. So this is from Francis in uh, Quebec, Canada. Nice, hey Francis. Uh, hey guys, nothing extravagant here, just some routine maintenance done a little while back. I figured I could still share it with you guys. I started with a good clean, followed by a complete wax to keep it looking sharp. I'll tell you what, I thought it was a brand new bike. Wow. Um, maintenance wise, I put on a brand new Eagle XX1 chain on my drivetrain and installed a Maxxis Ardent on the front, paired with an Icon on the rear. Oh dude, you've done them in town wall as well, amazing. Uh, next on the list is an 18 to 54 uh, tooth Star Ratchet upgrade. Nice, yeah, for the DT Swiss rear hub. Can't wait. It'll sound sweet when you get that on there too. Um, your bike looks amazing. I totally thought that was brand new. Um, so you've obviously spent some time cleaning that bad boy. 
looking awesome. And nice to hear from someone in Quebec as well. So nice one, Francis. Thanks for sending that in. Guys, keep your top mods coming in. We absolutely love them. You're killing it. There, once more, is the address we send them at the bottom of the screen. Let's have them. And now it's time for tech of the week. Now this is quite cool. So as I mentioned earlier, Hans Ray was in the office hanging out with us and it's always a pleasure to hang out with someone like Hans. He's just like, what he has done for the sport mountain biking is amazing. Now notice he had a bit of an odd looking belt on and he's like, oh yeah, I need to show you this. This is like, belongs to a friend of mine, it's his company. So in his belt on the buckle itself, the company's called Fix, you have a series of multi-tools. There's various different options available. They're super cool. They make all sorts of other things like this key ring fob, nice leather fob here, it's just got a few tools on there. I'm just going to throw you a link to the site at the moment. The belt is an awesome idea. So it's like a nylon webbing style skateboard belt and it's got a specific type of buckle on it. And the idea is you buy the belt, like you can see here, and then you choose which of the multi-tools that you want to go within it. And the one that Hans had was an even newer version than this one I hear in my hand. And you could even fit into their quick links from a chain. And he said that there's a prototype one that he's testing at the moment. It's even got Dyna plugs in it, ready to seal up your tires. So this is like a proper MacGyver effect belt. I think this is one of the coolest little bits of tech I've seen in a long time, because it's always just going to be within a belt that you can just wear and go about your day. I think the only time you'd ever need to be concerned about that is if you uh, went to get on a plane, you want to make sure you put your tools away in your luggage so you don't get them confiscated because they've got sharp items on those. But it's such a cool thing. If everyone's going bagless when they're going riding, um, trying to put your tools on your bike and on your body in a way that's not going to hurt you, that is a fantastic way of doing it. Absolutely love it. So thank you, Hans, for introducing me to this because it's really cool. Thanks for leaving this one with me as well. Uh, what it means is I'm now going to need to get one of the belts in order to put this in. So um, I'll show you mine when I get one. There we go. There's another weekly GMBN tech show in the bag. Hopefully you liked some of the content on here and some of the cool stuff we've seen in news. Uh, if you've got any comments, I'd love to hear from you. Add them in those comments below this very video. And for a couple more great videos, click down here if you want to see my bike check over on GMBN. I think that went up earlier today. And click up here if you want to know a bit about MTB technical confusing bike jargon. As always, uh, give us a thumbs up if you love GMBN tech. And please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. See you later.